Good evening. Welcome to Markets Today. I'm Lata Venkatesh and with me is Surabhi Upadhyay. Uh, it was uh, yet another day of selling in the global markets uh, and that uh, was reflected in India as well. Uh, Indian indices by end of day, the Nifty in particular, lost about half a percent but there was much more carnage in the mid-cap space and more importantly even the Nifty went below that psychologically important 8,000 mark. Though it has recovered and ended closer to 8,050, there is a fear that uh, the markets probably will lose a little more before they find support. Hi, Surbhi. Hi, Lata. Yes, I suppose we were just dealing with what seemed to be more of an internal Indian market issue till a couple of sessions back, but now it's taken on a bit of a global nature itself. There's plenty to discuss. We will uh, get down to that. J just let's, for now, start with the headlines. Volatility hits the last street. The Nifty slips below 8,000 in intraday trade, but a last half hour recovery pulls the index above 80.50 at close. The Sensex falls half a percent, closing just under 26,600. Banks lead the fall. IT stocks see some buying on the back of the weakness in the rupee. The mid cap index tumbles 1.7%. Jet Airways and SpiceJet fall 9 and 6% respectively on rising crude oil prices. Mid cap banks like Orient Bank of Commerce, Yuko, and Bank of India fall between 4 and 6%. KC International, Shimano Entertainment uh, buck the trend. That's because of good fourth quarter earnings. Hero Motors skids off the mark in the fourth quarter. Profit and margins fall more than expectation. The company says sluggishness in rural markets has hit growth. High ad spends are responsible for the 240 basis points fall in margins. The Indian currency tumbles to its lowest level since September 2013, falling as low as 64.23. Incessant foreign investor selling of equities and the weakness in bonds hurt sentiment. The benchmark 10-year yield spikes 10 basis points to hit nearly 8%. Well, those were some of the headlines uh, from the markets and here are the experts that we have lined up on the show. Adrian Moad of JP Morgan will tell us how global investors are viewing the recent spate of correction in the Indian market. Uh, Ajay uh, uh, Srivastava and Nirmal Jain will also analyze the reasons for the sell-off and the road ahead. We'll also get you opinion on the rupee and bonds from Anand Narayan of uh, Standard Chartered Bank. Okay, so before we get to all that opinion, let's tell you what exactly was transpiring today. The bears have a firm grip on the Lal Street, continued selling by FIIs, coupled with a weak rupee and a sell-off in the global markets led to the Nifty falling below the 8,000 mark in intraday trade today. The Sensex actually fell over 100 points as well and finally ended the day at 26,599. Anuj Singhala joins us for a complete wrap of the day's trading action. Anuj, another major disappointment, uh, disappointing day for the uh, bulls at least. Well, the, the, the day was really bad. It was volatile. But what was uh, interesting was that every rally was being sold into. The last rally, which was once the Nifty went below 8,000, didn't get sold into because there was not enough time. So that, the test for that would be tomorrow morning. But really, uh, you know, the Nifty broke 8,000 in late trade. So from 9,000 something, we have seen 7,000 something now. There was uh, a bit of short covering in the last 30 minutes, but the test would be tomorrow. The rupee hit a fresh 20 month low. That was a big break on sentiment. And of course, the bank Nifty suffered a bit of a mini collapse today, breaking below the 200 day moving average. Let's talk about some of the stocks that led the market down. And really, it's bank on, banks on top yet again. We had Bank of Baroda down 5%, Kotak was down 3%, Access was down 3%. Some of the other bank stocks which fell included ICICI, that was down about 2.5%. Yes Bank was down 3%, PNB was down 2.5%. A lot of banks and NBFCs fell in trade today. Apart from that, this is the list of stocks which worried a lot of people. Maruti in particular has started to decline. That was the most outperforming stock and today it was down 2.5%. ONGC was down 2.5%, Tata Motors as well, down about 2%. On the gaining side, IT stocks looked really strong uh, because of valuations and because of currency factors. So TCS was up 3% and even Infosys and Wipro did well. ITC was up 1.5%, that looked good. And Bajaj Auto, one stock which has fallen quite a bit, saw some bargain buying. Outside the index, it's this, this set of stocks which is really worrying a lot of people. The FNO stocks, the high pedigree stocks. PFC was down 7%, REC was down 6%, Vokhart after 10% fall yesterday was down 7%. And purely from the mid-cap space, the stocks that fell were the high beta ones. MEP Infra, the new listing, was down about 12%, IFCI down 7%, and HCC was down about 5%. So we've broken 8,000 intraday now. The key is, will the Nifty settle below 8,000 before any bounce, or have we made a near-term bottom? That's something that we'll come to know over the next few days.
All right, Anush, thanks so much for that. Well, that was the equity market, but the pain wasn't restricted just to equities. In fact, the money market saw plenty of drama as well. In fact, the Indian currency can continue to plummet in trade today, and the rupee fell to a 20-month low of 64.23. In fact, that's exactly where it ended towards those lows of the session. Lata, what did you make of the fall that we've seen in the rupee and also the, the, uh, you know, the hardening of the bond deals that we saw today? Hardening of the bond yield is a bit of a worry. The rupee is not that much of a worry for the simple reason that for the past 18 months it has been a rank out performer and that doesn't do any good to the economy. Uh, it makes imports uh, cheaper, it makes exports expensive and we have seen it in the corporate results. So this is welcome both for corporate India and for the government and for the Reserve Bank of India. That said, of course, the rapidity of a fall is always destabilizing. Uh, today the trigger clearly, or in the last few days, the trigger has been uh, foreign investors selling equity and now they're clearly selling the shares and taking the money out. Uh, this is a global reset. I mean, uh, you are seeing uh, crude prices rising and to that extent, uh, India becomes less favorite as a market. Its equities also are sold off and the currency also gets sold off. Uh, the bonds uh, are, are likely to be more vulnerable than equity because the bond investors have a very uh, clear... Uh, exchange rate as well as interest rate arbitrage when they come. The moment the currency falls, uh, it makes it, uh, the arbitrage becomes uh, much, much less attractive and they will tend to sell out faster. So that's uh, uh, exactly why you saw FII is selling out of the debt market and that is why you saw uh, bond prices crash and bond yields uh, rise by about 10 basis points. But 8% will be an extremely attractive level where a lot of um, uh, public sector banks or Indian banks will want to come and buy bonds uh, because ultimately inflation is still soft in India. Growth is not very good. There is still a chance the Reserve Bank will cut at some point in time in uh, 2015. So 8% should be a very good level. I don't see bonds, uh, bond yields rising too much from here on. But uh, the rupee could see a little bit more of falls depending on how uh, the global factors turn out whether there is still more risk off uh, as well with, uh, if there is more savage correction in the equity markets. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's get some more opinion going on that note. Will the rupee continue its downward spiral? Well, forex market experts say that monetary policy uncertainty coupled with outflows from equity markets will continue to weigh on the currency. We're watching global movements and bond prices very, very closely. The last week has been pretty uh, uh, active in that sense. Uh, the monetary policy uncertainty remains. Some people are still calling for a rate cut in June, but beyond that seems very, very murky. Uh, having said that, there are a couple of um, you know, hopes that we have for the future. One is, of course, uh, let's remember the FPI limits have been pretty much closed. You know, that could get opened up at some stage. That could provide some welcome relief for the bond markets. Secondly, a lot of people are calling for uh, CPI to come off even further. Um, you know, hopefully, the secular trend we've seen in the past, this is currently a correction rather than an actual reversal. India has really been the darling of the investor community since the Modi government came in last year. And as a result, we've seen a lot of investors pouring money into Indian assets. Uh, I guess we've reached a stage now where there has been a bit of disappointment uh, creeping in and investors are choosing to take profits. Uh, we've seen outflows from the equity market over the second half of last month. Uh, and I think in the near term, given that there's uh, further downward pressure on equity markets globally, uh, we can expect a little bit more depreciation in the rupee to come. All right, let's now get you some more big voices uh, on equity markets and on India in general. Adrian Moat, Managing Director and Chief Asian and Emerging Market Equity Strategist at JP Morgan, uh, told us the sell-off in the Indian markets uh, is part of a routine correction uh, that bull markets normally undergo. But he also believes that India is uh, perhaps losing its uh, tag as the star emerging market. It is a routine correction. Within emerging markets, 15, 20% corrections are often annual events. Um, this was very true of the bull market of the last decade. Now, I think there is some big stories globally. The, the consensus trade was dollar strength. Uh, the long duration, so bond yields were going to fall. Commodity prices were going to fall. And then in the middle of the March, those began to reverse. So U.S. data was disappointing. Expectations around the Fed got pushed out. In emerging markets, uh, this rally that's been consistent with the change in commodity prices in Brazil and Russia, plus China having this amazing short squeeze in April, 
is forcing a reassessment of asset allocation. And this is where India's consensus overweight has begun to hit it technically. And I think for probably another couple of weeks, you will see pressure for asset allocators and emerging market funds to reduce their Indian position. I always like those technical moves because they are driven by technical factors rather than fundamentals and usually offer a buying opportunity. Well, uh, uh, here's uh, Adrian Mowat uh, uh, saying the sell-off is just part of a routine correction, but uh, the markets have come a long way since uh, their highest closing of 8996, that was on the 3rd of March uh, this year, almost 9000 actually. Nigel D'Souza, who has been tracking all the price action, joins us with uh, his analysis of uh, uh, how much the markets have fallen and which stocks have been the underperformers in this journey from March 3rd to today. Over to you, Nigel. Well, the Nifty has taken a sharp knock if you just compare it with the closing highs that we saw in early March. So data compared from March 3rd, 2015, you'll see the Nifty has lost a good 950 points. That equates to nearly around 11%. You'll see the Bank Nifty has lost a good 13%, while the other losing indices as well up for you on your screen. The Relty Index is in there. We have the IT Index as well that's in there. And the Auto Index as well, all of them have lost between 10 to around 15%. The breadth of the market as well hasn't been uh, too good because the mid-cap, the small-cap space, they've lost between 8 to around 10% approximately. Take a look at some of those nifty losers first. Wipro as well as Kane India, they top the charts. In fact, they have lost between 90 to around 21%. But from the cement space, Altitech Cement, ACC as well as Ambuja, they have lost anything between 18 to around 22%. The heavyweight stocks, though, they have got clobbered, and that's what's broken the back of the of the Nifty. So you just take a look at that. Infosys is in there, LNT as well as HDFC, all of them losing 15 to around 16%. The biggest public sector as well as the biggest biggest private sector bank, both of them have lost more than 10%. And because of that, in fact, the bank has done a bit of an underperformance, but the real carnage has been seen in the broader market. So take a look at a few of those stocks. Sri Ram Transport, in fact, is in there. That one has lost 38%. TVS Motor, as well as Vocart and Arvind, some of the big outperformers in 2014, they have come in for some big profit booking just in the last couple of months. The high beta space, as expected, they have got smack. So you have Unitech, JSPL, uh, you have JP Power. Adani Pai, India Bulls Real Estate, all of them have lost in excess of around 28% to around 38%. Some howlers as well are in there. So KPIT Technologies, that has been seeing big selling pressure, big disappointment in terms of the numbers. That one has lost 55%. Take Solutions as well has lost a good 47%, while Bush and Steel, Rolta, Monarch, Ispat, all of them have taken a sharp knock just in the last couple of months. All right, Nigel, thanks so much for that. Let's move on to the big earnings of the day. Hero Motor Corp found itself in a tricky spot. The company's rural and urban sales are weak, and the company is trying to lower buyers by increasing its ad spends. That reflected in the company's fourth quarter numbers, missing estimates. Sonia Shinoi, who's been doing all the number crunching, now joins in with her analysis. Sonia, not a great position for Hero Motor Corp to be in in Q4. It looks disappointing for Hero Motor Corp, uh, definitely this quarter. So on the revenue front, it's a growth of around 4 odd percent uh, in line with estimates. But the real disappointment has come on the margin front. So we've seen the margins fall 140 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. They've gone down to 12.3 percent versus 13.7 percent. And the big culprit really is the higher ad expenses that the company had to make. So the other expenses for the company has gone up 25 percent year-on-year. The management explained it by saying that the ad spends as a percent percentage of revenue has gone up to 2.5% versus 2% earlier and this could be the case for a couple of years. They will have to make higher ad spends because one, they are getting into, plan to get into 50 new markets by uh, 2019 and two, the situation as far as uh, the uh, competitive landscape has also uh, you know, worsened. Uh, apart from that, uh, they've also not been able to pass on the 4% excise duty hike to consumers, so that has added on to uh, the damage on their margins. On the profitability front, the net profits are down 14% for the company at about 476 crores, but that includes a one-time loss of 155 crores. Even if you adjust for that, the profits uh, have gone up just about 14% at 631 crores, lower than what the street was estimating. But um, more than that, uh, the 
management's comment was co commentary was cautious at the uh, uh, conference call. They said that it's poor crop realization and moderating wages in the rural markets that uh, you know that has led to a lower um, demand. Demand will not pick up until the second half of uh, FY16, and also they say that they expect a volume growth of only five percent by the end of FY16. The stock could be under pressure tomorrow. Okay, all right, Sonia, thanks so much. Let's watch out for that reaction on Hero Motor tomorrow. Right now, time for a break, but coming up on the other side, Sudarshan Sukhani will be joining in for technical chat. We'll also tell you about some of the other stocks that were in news today.